is the Elevated Look Show, hosted by Mark Stamfly. Hernan Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Great to have you on the show today. Well, thank you for having me, man. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, you know, you are my neighbor as well, which is interesting. Isn't that sound right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, you're my first I'm neighbor. I'm like, where's the meeting now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come up one flight of stairs. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. I know, that's um, good, man. But uh, yeah, Hernan Rodriguez, celebrity photographer, yeah. uh, world-renowned speaker, you know, really big in the photography industry. Um, and I know you're doing a lot with like New Hollywood, yeah. up-and-coming actors, established actors, um, big time like um, MMA fighters, right, right. boxers. Right. Um, you have a really impressive resume behind you. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, it's so funny because, you know, I, the people I photographed, in the past, I guess, and some of these, like you're saying, some some people are icons, you know. I'm I've been blessed to photograph like Muhammad Ali for his 70th birthday. I've 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 dealt with uh, Neil Armstrong, like big names, you know. Uh, Helen Reddy, who was the the, uh, the women's, her, I guess her a music was used as an uh, anthem for women's lib rights. Mm. So you know, she's got like four uh, Grammys. So all these people who have kind of paved the road for our generation. Yeah. The, the young kids don't even know unless they're in performing arts, you know, mm, or some type of true. entertainment or the parents have educated them in that regard. As a matter of fact, I photographed uh, Mike Tyson and, you know, some of these kids were like, who, who's that, right? That's Which is kind of sad because that I mean, you know, so certain- He's still big though. He's listen, still big. Listen, certain names like that, you know, like, it's universal. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you say Tyson and you know, like Madonna, you say Madonna and everybody yeah. knows who Madonna is. So, but I've been trying to work with the newer generation, you know, and it's, I, I guess entertainment's taking a whole direction, a mm -hmm. different direction now, where who knows where the silver screen will be in, in the next couple of years. So, Very we're, you true. know, we're just in changing times. That's one thing like I kind of um, talk with people about is, you know, what, is, especially since the pandemic is like, right. what is Hollywood now? Like, you know, there's a sign on the hill there's like Hollywood, kind of the city, like right. the touristy area still. Right. But like, what is it? Is it? Is it? Are people still coming here? And it seems like they are, but still coming here to like live that American dream, or is it more like now just like the Hollywood's kind of just universal ideal across this, the United States, yeah. where people are like influencers and TikTok artists, and you know. I, I mean, I think Hollywood's always going to be Hollywood because there's only one, right? And California will always be desirable, right? Sure. So. You know, it's still the Mecca, though there's a lot of entertainment leaving to Georgia and certain places. I got, I got actors, I photographed, who are shooting now in Budapest, you know? Oh, wow. So, you know, that's a whole different ball of wax, you know, for different reasons. But I think Hollywood still is Hollywood, you know? Yeah. It's just changing. Like, like you're saying, there's a transition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I get people who are like, hey, you know, I want to I visit Hollywood. <laughs> but that's funny because sure, yeah. I don't even know what to tell them. Yeah. Like, is it the sign or is mm -hmm. it the studio? Do you want to see maybe a behind the scenes on... Yeah. You know, filming a show or is it just like the glamorous kind of romanticized you know I mean? nature of Hollywood versus yeah. like, you I, um, know, kind of <laughs> what it sometimes I was almost like. going to take a TMZ tour bus, right? You know, to go oh, really? like what you the heck going is, to? Yeah. Oh, I'm, just I'm, to get research? I, I have no idea <laughs> what it's about, yeah, right? So yeah. I'm like, you know, they take you to these landmarks, but I guess it's different if you live here or you're in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. because Hollywood is a whole different thing for yeah. you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, well, kind of going back to what you said earlier, you know, you've done all these icons, mm -hmm. you know, sp big sports and athletes and actors, actresses. Um, I guess I have a few questions, but like, I guess first off, is there any, like, do you have a, like a favorite moment? Is there, is there a moment that kind of, maybe was like a breakthrough moment for you that kind of started it all? Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, there was a breakout. Th I mean, I've, when I started, I guess I, I, I said, when did you start by the way? Let's just, you know, so I, audience knows. My dad was a photographer, right? And not really, more as a hobbyist. Okay. He was a technical illustrator. You know, I mean, my whole family, like my mom's an interior decorator, my sister's a fashion designer. So I grew up around the arts. Creative arts. So I never wanted to pursue photography. You know, hmm. I, was, uh, I was a graphic designer. Then I got into illustration like my dad did. Uh, I became an art director. So I was more in the production side yeah. of creating media. Um, and. I just decided to, you know, shoot did you, my Did own. you always like, um, while you were doing all that stuff, mm -hmm. because your dad and your family was like in the arts and he, your dad was a photographer as a hobbyist, right. did you kind of have a, w did you already kind of have a foundation of like how to do photography or it hadn't started yet? No, I mean, I saw what he did and I, I guess what you inherit is just maybe um, 
the, the passion, the love, and maybe their, their perspective, yeah. you know? Like my dad had a certain protocol, what he would do, and you know, kids, and he, he was big into posing. So, okay. not that I was studying that, but that just kind of lays a found, like you're saying, it lays a foundation mm. where, you know, body language is very important. Okay. So, when I did get into photography eventually, I mean, that, I probably gravitated to that part of the, uh, the, the, the discipline much easier mm -hmm. than, you know, maybe having to study posing for years, right? Okay. So, I mean, that became very, very natural to me. But I didn't pick up photography until maybe later in my advertising career where I decided to shoot my own ads. Interesting. I was in charge of hiring photographers. Why did you decide, why did you make that decision? Like, what spurred that? Did there you was, like, this, these are crappy ads, I can do better? You know, there was, a, <laughs> that's I, what I, would I mean, I did, that's what it was. I yeah. would storyboard my ideas and either a whole catalog or a campaign or, you know, an ad, an ad for whatever, workout company. Uh, and the photographer for me would fall short for, for my vision. Okay. So I said, let me just do this. You know, I got a camera. I set it on automatic because I didn't know how to shoot. Okay. But I had the vision. You know, I knew exactly what, where I wanted to get to. You know, composition, perspective, and certain angles. I studied all this. I mean, I studied okay. perspective for, I mean, um, I studied architecture for a year. I studied, uh, you know, a lot of basic uh, fundamental uh, things that could relate now or yeah. transition to photography. Because most people are like, hey, how do you, I have to really articulate my thought process on how I do certain things. Because for me, like color, harmony starts. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very intuitive because mm -hmm. I, I took it for years. So I see color and sometimes I have to think, why do I see the certain, th certain okay. things I do? But it's just a, a history or like a yeah. life, lifetime studying that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you kind of already had that background, but it also seems like some of the disciplines that you had trained yourself in kind of could bring a different perspective than somebody who just did photography from the beginning. Exactly. Which I think is great. Exactly. So, I mean, I tell anybody who wants to learn anything, study art, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, there's so much value in studying art. And, I mean, so I apply that to all my work now. And, and I think when I started seeing my vision come to, you know, to concrete ads, let's say, for instance, or print ads, then, you know, then I went, I backtracked. I'm like, you know, let me start taking courses in photography. Let me learn the basics. Let mm. me learn how to operate a camera and you know once because that, that's easy to learn you can't yeah. tr you, you can't the technical side exactly <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you, you can't teach vision like yeah. you have a certain perspective on how you see life right mm -hmm. I mean I see things you know for me I see everything and for in, in my mind I have to minimize mm -hmm. so when I, I shoot a picture my mind is just going like crazy like I see this I see angles I see lines so I start you know taking things extracting things from mm -hmm. from that and I leave it to the bare elements that I want. You know, sometimes it's asymmetrical design or composition where I might have a, a celebrity hanging on one side and I have all this empty space on the other, but it, mm -hmm. it balances because mm -hmm. it's black and white. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I start seeing naturally, you know? So when you're doing a shoot, like, is there kind of, you know, um, a kind of a priority list going through your mind of like, okay, I'm going to look at color first and then I'm going to look at like, the composition, and then I'm going to look at the lines and how everything lines up. And I mean, I think I let it, I, I let the actual personality dictate. Okay. You know my the, the end result go. exactly the, my direction. So you know, like we just did something for Mario Lopez, right? And that was for uh, DS DSW. Mm -hmm. Now that was given. They set a, a, a cer certain parameters for me because it's a brief. Yeah. You know, you have to stay within the confines of what we Whatever need for for is. commercial purposes. <laughs> yeah. What the brand is, right? Yeah. But in that process, I could, you know, artistically interject, you know, to an extent, mm -hmm. you know, some, some uh, artistic freedom, you know, and... and it's kind of like once you know the rules, then you can kind of play the game within those rules as best as you possibly exactly, can. Experiment exactly, exactly. Experiment and do different, you know, things. Exactly. Yeah. So for, for, you know, for that campaign, they wanted, you know, like the shoes to be important, of course, because it's the product. But I just implemented, you know, using a lot of color, mm -hmm. vibrancy, you know, saturated yeah. colors. Yeah, the and colors were really good. You know, desaturated, you know, certain things on the background. So it gives it like my style, my, my imprint. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I do with any, any job I get, you know. Do, do you like the more, um, do you like having that kind of, you know, the rules presented and that focus given to you? Or would you rather just have free reign? I like somewhere in the middle. Okay. <laughs> I, I love to work in a uh, collaborative fashion, okay. right? Where somebody comes in with a certain vision they, that they have. Because what happens is sometimes, you know, I'm so fixed on what I want. You know, even, let's say, 
I'm giving free reign, like, oh, just come up with whatever you want, which mm -hmm. it happens to me sometimes. Then I have to start kind of like, okay, let me get to the storyboard. Let me, you know, and if you're, if you're stale, mm -hmm. because it happens as artists, like, oh my gosh, like I've done this so many times. Where do I go with this one now? But sometimes having somebody have some direction yeah. is great when they give you that starting point. Then they say like, let, let me see what you can do mm -hmm. with this. And that's, that's awesome because it, it takes me to new horizons, you know? Yeah, especially also if, if, you're doing, if you're doing it for yourself, I think having the free reign you know, maybe makes more sense. But when somebody else is giving you like, yeah, I just go to town. Right. Sometimes it makes it harder and longer of a process because you know, is this what you want? Is this what you want? And then it's like, you're wasting all this time. That's exactly. Because they, they do have some idea what they want, right. but they're not really expressing it. Right, so you could spin your wheels for quite, you know, quite yeah. a bit of time. And it's happened to me before where I just go in and, and you know, I was, I was doing a, um, we were doing a, a, spe a speculation or, or a proposal for Halle Berry, for instance. And maybe for the audience, like, can you kind of, ex what is a speculation proposal? Speculation is like, they give me a, a, a they give me a, a brief, they give me a job and say, okay, this is what we want for the end result of this brand, for instance. And they shop the images around. It was for a workout line. Okay. Uh, it's almost like a test or a trial run mm -hmm. with you. To see um, if then they're going to hire you for like the actual campaign or something else down exactly. the line. Exactly. And you have to be very selective on how much, you know, speculation work you could get because mm -hmm. you end up spinning your wheels and not getting paid. Yeah, that's So, nice. you know what I mean? So I'll go out and do or I choose certain jobs that I know could really pay good dividends at the end. Okay. Because, you know, you're always about establishing new relationships, new boundaries. And, you know, and, and you, you, you can't turn everything down and you can't take everything. So you got to sure. be somewhere in the middle. Mm hmm and for but a job, Holly Berry, I mean, that's a good. I mean, come one on, you, you know, gotta, right? you gotta go for that, right? Exactly. You gotta so, go for Holly Berry. So you know, we spent about I don't know about two weeks back and forth and going and giving giving ideas. There was a brand that we had to kind of go. The art director was involved, and you know, is this the direction you want to go? Is it good with her because she has a certain style of lighting she likes? Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, she's been working with a certain photographer for quite a long time. So and why were they decide they were? thinking of switching it up here or yeah just at the, put in some, at somebody the end else? of the day after I spent you know yeah. a lot of time doing this then they decided to stick with their old photographer okay because he felt very comfortable yeah I mean that makes sense you know and I could appreciate that you know at first I'm like oh gosh you know like I put all this time but I could appreciate that because I photograph certain celebrities that they're very loyal to mm -hmm. calling me on certain jobs well, that's a good thing whether if it's a billboard for their for an ad for even their family you know mm -hmm. like hey can you come down and photograph our family so there's a sense of loyalty which you appreciate. So I could, I could relate to that. Okay. Um, but you know, sometimes you get the gig, sometimes you don't. So yeah. that's how this industry works. Okay. And then um, just before I don't forget, is like uh, the breakthrough moment, like that we were talking about. Was was that um, the switch of kind of career paths, or was it something, or was it an actual shoot? Because it seemed like you had something you're going to say on that. Yeah. That. So, so the break. <laughs> yeah. So I went off on a tangent a bit. <laughs> yeah. But the breakthrough moment was, you know, going into actually pursuing photography on my own. So I mm. went out and I started shooting ads. That really wasn't the breakthrough moment. I set myself to do celebrity work. That was the start okay. of this new career, right? Yeah. So I started, you know, photographing and I said, well, I could do this. I went to school. I studied that. Then I just started kind of putting feelers out there. You know, I, I started pursuing, um, you know, agents and publicists. Okay. And, you know, I did a lot of... <laughs> As a matter of fact, I worked for a year and a half just for free, you know? Really? Pro bono just to Wow, start that's a lesson for a lot of people then to you know, <laughs> put, I in tell the, you, put in the time, you not get really, the silver platter handed to them. You know, it doesn't, you have to put in your work. Yeah. I mean, this industry, whether it's video, whether it's, you know, photography, yeah. I mean, anything in the arts, you really have to pay your, your dues yeah. because it's so competitive. Mm -hmm. And people are like, w w what makes you better than this person? Or this person's charging Absolutely. this much. Why do you charge that much? I charge my rate because I yeah. come with a vast, you know, body of work yeah. and education and skill level. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why then, Absolutely. you know, that just go with whoever you feel comfortable e exactly, with their yeah. rate, but you're going to get what you pay for. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So that's where kind of where our industry falls on, on, on that. But I, I worked just to build a body of work. My objective was to... Have an impressive like portfolio. Have an impress yeah, exactly. Have an impressive body of work and say, wow, you know? So I worked with, you know, sports agents, like you're saying. I started photographing, you know, MMA fighters. I started photographing, you know, actors. I started 
just like New Hollywood, you're saying, mm -hmm. like these kids will be like the next Brad Pitt. Yeah. You know, like one kid I just photographed, you know, now he's starring in an American Horror Story. Oh, very cool. You know, he just uh, did the prom on Netflix with, um, with uh, Meryl Streep. Oh, so yeah. this guy's really like yeah. exploding, you know? Yeah, got the momentum going. Exactly. So, you know, I've been photographing him for three years now and I have like all this body of work of this one kid. <laughs> oh, you know really? I mean? That long? Yeah. So we started oh, and he just like, hey, I need to test. I need to do this. So, you know, as his career grows. Yeah, then you kind of go you know, along he, with You go along with him. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So that's with anybody. Uh, but my breakout moment was a cold call to uh, Evander Holyfield. Mm. And awesome. I was watching, it's so funny, I was watching a... Um, I think it was a Christian channel, and he was giving a TBN. testimony. Was it TBN? TBN. TBN. I was watching TBN. And is he was that still a thing? Is that still on? It's still, yeah, oh, okay. it still is on, you know? I guess it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and he was talking about his mom was a uh, pastor, and he was talking about how he came to God, and, and I'm like, you know what? This guy seems like a really good guy, you know? Okay. So, as a matter of fact, I was having dinner with a glass of wine. <laughs> okay. I'm like, let me take his information. I did his research and I said, I'm going to send him a, a, just like a, a cold email. So you, oh, you didn't have any connection to him at all? No just connection. Like, okay. It was a, it's like a cold call, you know? Wow. Like, hey, listen, you know, this is who I am. This is my body of work. Again, to the body of work. And you already had built it through your free, That you was, know, you know, I can't go solicit celebrities unless yeah, you have some type absolutely. of celebrity or something, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Like they're you gonna gotta say, bring value. Exactly. You know, that's like if you're gonna be an architectural photographer and you have no houses or mm -hmm. no architectural in your in your you know portfolio curriculum, yeah. like people are just taking a you know a shot in the dark with you. Yep. <laughs> so when you come to celebrity work, like I want to see who you who you photograph. Yeah. Because they're entrusting their A-lister and their mm -hmm. you know prize jam to you. And the trust you can be able to create, you know, yeah. a certain brand for them. So, you know, I showed Evander. I sent him my website. I sent him my curriculum. What I do. This is my background. This is my education. I didn't hear anything from him for, you know, a month. I said I, I gave up. You know. Did you keep sending, or you just sent that one time? And, and I sent it one time. Okay. Now, you know, every approach is different because yeah. sometimes, you know... Because it's, it's funny, the last guest I had on the show um, was a different thing. She's a, a TED speaker, you know, TED Talks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it took her uh, two years of sending applications every day oh to, get her my. to get her first. She's done three so far. Wow. Um, but I was like, whoa, like that kind of persistence is... But then also, there's I think there's a level of like... You had already developed yourself, like your one email, like whatever it was, right. like had so much value packed into it. Exactly. That, it, that once they did see it, they would ha be able to make a, a decision. Exactly. I mean, I think when you're when you're soliciting, let's say, an email or, or prospecting a new client, you know, yeah. especially celebrities, um, you know, it can be a hard sell. It's. You know, it, it comes very offensive to anybody. So I showed my body of work. I said, this is what I could do for you. You always have to find out, put yourself in the position of the other person, the other entity, whatever that entity might be, uh, and say, this is what I could, this is the value I bring to mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it becomes one-sided and they know that you're just you're trying, trying to, get, to get, gain, get. Yeah, that's, then, then that's the turnoff switch, mm -hmm. right? That's so, in life. Exactly, so you know, in, in life, period. Yeah. So I put that on this body, you know, this, the, the text of the email and said, this is what I could bring for you, to you. And three months later, I get a, you know, I'm at home, I'm in my studio and I get a call coming in, Holyfield Enterprise. <laughs> okay. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Holyfield Enterprise. So, you know, it was his agent. Um, we t spoke for like two hours, man. Wow. And we hit it off. You know, they, and you know, she's kind of interviewing me. Okay. She said, I have a great feeling about you. And my dad was a pastor too, so we talked oh, a lot, okay. a little bit about about our background. We talked about you know our faith. We talked about where we're going with you know like his brand, my brand. And they said, "Are you willing to do this shoot for him?" Okay. And it all started there. You know, now we've been friends for ten years. Wow. I get emails every day. You know, like his motivational, kind of inspiring. Okay. Uh, you know, from him. Bible verses every day. He oh interesting. You know he he did a That's pretty for, cool. Yeah, for my son, I said, Evander, can you? You know, actually, the first year of COVID was in March, and my son's birthday was March 24th. Okay. So he sent him a personal message because oh, this was wow, upstairs. Cool. We was downstairs in yeah. our in our place. So he just said, you know, like, hey, this message is to you. So I mean, it's nice. We yeah, we yeah. we become friends. Where we hung out in Arizona at a you know same same room. 
He was my roommate. Oh wow! So <laughs> you know, it it's been re yeah, it's, yeah. it's been special, you know. That's, that's great. And it was all because you know I pursued something mm -hmm. that I thought could get me somewhere. I showed value to somebody, it's and, amazing. and now it's a relationship. That's great, man. I think that's so. That was my breakout. That's through. a great breakthrough moment. And yeah. I'll tell you what. So with that friendship. He invited me to Muhammad Ali's 70th birthday. Wow. And he photographed Muhammad Jeez. Ali. Yeah, that's exciting. After Muhammad Ali, uh, Mike Tyson was going to meet Evander Holyfield. And I created the reunion portraits of both of them together after the ear body wow. situation. So I captured, you know, How like. How long had it been? Gosh, it was like five years since yeah. they had seen each other. Yeah, geez. And so f it, it was a special, it was a special moment because he took me on a journey on a personal journey with him, yeah. you know, and one last thing that he invited me to was uh, to go see Mandela, Nelson Mandela wow. in Africa. And uh, I didn't go because he forgot to order me a ticket, you know, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I see on social oh, media, no. I see on social media, Evander, oh, Evander's geez. with Mandela. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, come on. <laughs> what happened? I thought He's we were like, done. oh my gosh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, you were no. supposed to speak to so-and-so. But it's 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 great, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I I love him, and you know, we're, he's a good he's a good friend now. Wow, very so that's awesome, man. You know, so after that, it, it just it took off from there. That's amazing. Um, you know, now since you've you know taken off, and is there you know I was gonna ask in general, but I was thinking maybe just to narrow it down more. Is there like a specific shoot, maybe over maybe since the pandemic? Is there a certain shoot that's been kind of special, or that you, there's been you know that you've been maybe your favorite shoot, or just something that's Obviously, we like all our clients. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah, like yeah. all our people, but is there like one that stands out it right does. now? It does. Which one is that? There's one that stands out. Um, you know, I think when you get into this type of work and, you know, like you're, you, I mean, what you do is great because you have a great personality, you're engaging, but you? it, it's authentic. So you become a discerner of people. Sure. So, you know, I've had a lot of articles written of my, my, my work and, it's nice to sit back after like, you know, 18 years and, you know, you're interviewed and it makes you think and pause to see what makes you or what establishes, you know, you as a, as a photographer mm -hmm. and, and what you bring to these images because these, you know, editors who have photo, uh, interviewed me, they say, you know what, after seeing all your images, your images speak. Hmm. There's something special about them. There's an interaction. There's a feeling. There's an emotion. Hmm. And what is it that you do to get this out of these people? So during this pandemic, everything was shut down, you know. I mean, I, I had about maybe big, four big celebrity shoots that they were cautious, like her and we got mm -hmm. to pull the plug on imagine, this for a yeah. while, you know. Uh, James Taylor, I was in a photograph, mm -hmm. and they said, you know, let's just wait on this, you know. So I just started shooting for my personal, you know, work, my body yeah. of work. And I went to a coffee shop down the street here. Do you remember that coffee bean that was at the corner here, like on uh, yeah. Wilshire? I mean, oh, it, on Wilshire or on yeah. Montana? No, no, it was on Wilshire. Oh, okay. Is it gone right, now? It's gone now, yeah. Yeah, pandemic got it, huh? Yeah, pandemic got <laughs> it. So there was this gentleman, this older guy sitting around the corner. Uh, he was homeless, you know, he was sitting on his wheelchair. Okay. And, you know, there was something special about him when I walked, when I walked up to the cop, you know, up to, up to the front door. And just his gaze, you know, he had these beautiful blue eyes, but just the gaze he had looking at me, you know? Mm. And I think, you know, people like that are, are dismissed in life. Yeah. You know, and they look and, you know, they look away or people don't look at them. People don't acknowledge them. So I just stopped, you know, I just stopped to talk to him. And during a pandemic, it's like, well, most people are like cautious. Yeah. You know, we don't know what's going on and, mm -hmm. and with this whole thing going on. Are we around people? And especially yeah. if somebody's homeless and living yeah, in the street, you know? Getting, you know, tons of people around. Exactly. <laughs> But he was so special. I mean, mm. I just saw something and I just gave him the time. We, we, we chatted for about 40 minutes. Oh, very cool. Got him a cup of coffee, got him a, sang got him a sandwich. I found out he was a professional tennis player. No way. You know, he was wow. teaching like these, you know, a lot of these celebrities on, on, you know, how to play tennis. He had his whole, he had a house, he had all these things going on. And all of a sudden, you know, he lost his gig, he lost his job, he lost his house and everything just went wow. downhill from them. From from there on, but you know everybody has a story, yeah. And we just got to give that attention to to mm -hmm. they're humans, you know. We I mean yeah. whether it's anybody. So I think we, even when I'm photographing a person, it made me pause. And the reason why I'm saying this story and the reason why it's special is that it made me pause why I do what I do, because I put myself in the person's position and I want to mm -hmm. find out who you are. Yeah. Because if I'm if I'm creating a portrait, 
you know, it's authentic only to the person because if they cannot identify mm -hmm. with that image or mm -hmm. their family, maybe it's a family portrait. If the mom doesn't acknowledge like that's my son, you yeah. know, if there's an agent that photographs, you know, her client and you can't identify that client for, yeah. you know, for the publicist that like, that's not him, you know, sure. you didn't capture him. How can we sell him? How can we mm -hmm. promote him? So you really have to be a discerner, you know? Okay. And that, that discernment comes from really valuing the person and taking the time to acknowledge them in who they are, you know? And that's from for your starting point on how you create a good image. Okay. You know, so okay. it, got me, it got me thinking again of why or where I started all this, you know? Okay. And, cool. you know, I guess that's why for me that's a special image. And I, st I mean, I have, I have that image and it's, it's a beautiful image. The gap in that story was after spending 40 minutes with him, yeah. I asked him like, hey, listen, do you mind if I create a picture with you? Mm. He was an actor and he was in movies. Hmm. As a matter of fact, he said, you know, this is great because I used to do, I, I forget what movies he did, but he did a couple of, you hmm. know, really marquee images that I, that I recall. And I said, let me, let me bring my camera and just let's just spend, you know, 30 minutes doing something. Okay. And I went back and these images were awesome. I don't think I've seen these. No, I haven't even shared them. You haven't them. released them yet? I haven't released are them. Are you going to release them? I will. Oh, okay. To you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, cool. Yeah, but I mean, so, you know, it was, it, was, it was just great. It was a great time. That's awesome. That's a really cool story. Um, it, it sparked another question because I was thinking of something else, but um, this idea of um, what do you do, like, you know, I, I love that. Like, you're trying, I, you know, I, same thing, like, I do uh, producing for, like, Unscripted. Right, right. And if you're doing, like, a documentary, you're trying to get, like, the story from the person, right? Right, right. But what do you think about, you know, you know, say you get a gig and they're like, okay, we want this kid to look cool and, and movie star, but that's not really who they are. Like, so you have this authentic side, you want to get out. Right. But then you have this other image that's just kind of, like, superficial. Like, how do you balance those two worlds? Is, is that, like, a fight? Is that, or, like, what do you, I don't know. Well, no, it's interesting. It's a great question because when I photograph my celebrities, um, the, the, the celebrities will have, whether it's, a, it's a, an actor, a singer, you know, a fighter, whatever it, is, whatever it is, they have this personified image of who the general audience will assume them to yeah. be, right? So if it's like a, a Liz Taylor, for instance, right? Or if it's like a Selena Gomez, you know? You know, the image, the perception people have of her is this certain look, right? Mm -hmm. This Jennifer Aniston, right? This Brad Pitt. You know, we look at them as like, you know, this is who they are, sure. you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's that personified image for the public. Now, when I'm one on one with these celebrities, yeah. I want to capture, I don't want to, I don't want those images. Yeah. I want you to give me who you are, mm -hmm. you know? So I start scratching the surface. Okay. And, you know, for me, I just like that, that raw look, you know? Let's just pull everything aside, let's pull the veil down. Yeah. Like, who are you, you know? So I love this intimacy of a portrait where, it's almost their face forward, right? Yeah, because like it really too. captures an expression. But not always will the agent like that to promote them. So when I'm yeah, creating, that's, you know what I mean? The, that's the back and forth, right? Yeah, that's, exa the that's the back and forth. So I'll create some images that I call for myself. I'll okay. shoot for myself, uh, those on the side. Okay. Like this one I just, this celebrity I just photographed, right? Mm -hmm. The guy was fixing his tie, looking off to one side. Oh, that wasn't posed, that, that picture you showed me. That, that was, wasn't posed. Oh, it was just cool. like yeah. a shot I really saw, good. and I'm like, wait, hold it, pause there. Because for me, I want to capture some images that yeah. I see him. Like, yeah. I see him kind of low-key, you know. So I saw a certain thing about him that I wanted to capture. Now, the images the publicist will want are completely different. I mean, it's almost like straightforward looking at the camera, mm -hmm. engaging, you know, big eyes, you yeah. know. Almost a smirk, a little smile. Uh, yeah, no, I like that's that's one of the reasons why I um, kind of have kept like our show here, right? Is because it is more comfortable, it just feels more natural and down to sure. earth than going to like a studio or even like our o new office space and things like that. I feel like th I kind of, you know, and until I get inspired otherwise, like this is kind of <laughs> kind of my jam. This works. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. comfortable. As a matter of fact, you know, some of some of the actors. Uh, I photograph before Santa Monica. I had a place in, in Sherman Oaks, or I, I still have to. It was a home based studio. Okay. So I converted this farmhouse into like five rooms. Oh, wow. And I was photographing, I mean, I photographed the Gypsy Kings there. You know, I photographed, you know, the Boston Celtics, some other players oh, wow. from, from the Celtics. 
I photograph, and it's a, uh, you know it's a low key vibe mm -hmm. where and different. It's different because yeah. they feel like they're really protected. They're not going to a studio where there are all these people in front of yeah. their face. Th that's what they're accustomed to all the time, and they don't want that. Yeah. So it pulls the guard down for me. Very you know, good. Just sit back and have a good time, you know? <laughs> and they feel good, you know, because I yeah. took a consensus after, after every shoot. Like, are you comfortable? Was it okay for you? Like, was this? Oh, really? They're like, hey, you know. Do a little, like, mini in a review I of I did, you? because I <laughs> wanted to know, like, does a home-based studio work for people? Ah, uh, okay. And it did, because okay. they're like, they could be themselves. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Um, one thing I want to ask you, we don't spend too much time on it, but um, just for like kind of the audience out there, for, you know, either new students or people who it's their hobby or just people who are interested in taking up photography. Right. Would you give any kind of like pointers or tips for people just starting that journey? You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword photography nowadays, right? Yeah. I mean, whether you're shooting video, whether you're shooting stills, uh, Everyone port does portrait it. work. <laughs> you know, the thing about these, it's either a cell phone or this mm -hmm. automation done with this camera that could do it all. Yeah. Set it at, you know, just pick up the camera and just go with it. Uh, and especially like the near, like this next generation of, of, of talent, you know, mm -hmm. of, of shooters or photographers, you still have to know the fundamentals. Yeah, You still, absolutely. like you're saying, you still have to know what exposure, what value is. You still have to know what, you know, composition is. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have to know a bit of psychology and how to deal with people because you just don't pick up a camera and shoot. Yeah. Because then you, all you're gonna do is get a snapshot. Yeah, exactly. So you still, I mean, you still have to educate yourself in that regard. So, I mean, I'm like, to, are you more for when you say educate yourself? Are you more for like traditional school system, like self-educating through like books and online, like any any well, specific direction or all the above? It's a vast world where you can <laughs> yeah. get that education yeah. now, right? I mean, like YouTube and you got. Yeah. Unfortunately, like the school nowadays, like I would say go to school. Yeah. But you know, like you Brooks Inst Institute is, is is shut down. Yeah. Uh, Hallmark, you know, photography school is shut down. Like all these big institutions that are for the yards are yeah. shut down. Hmm. And why is that? Well, you know, there's all this education for free now. Mm -hmm. You know, do we read any encyclopedias yeah. anymore? Do we read, uh, you know, magazines? Well, magazines are, are, are becoming, yeah. you know, I, I remember Vogue, yeah. which were <laughs> glossy. Do you still have any subscriptions? I do, but they're this narrow, you know, <laughs> yeah. I almost printed on newsprint. I just get the ones, uh, honestly, the only two I get is Emmy Magazine, because I'm a member yeah. of the TV Academy. Yeah. And, uh, and then recently, actually, thank you, the TV Academy, uh, they gave us uh, a year of Entertainment Weekly. <laughs> so oh, nice. now I have an Entertainment Weekly coming. But other than that, um, I used to love magazines though, as, like, as a kid. I used to love them. Well, for instance, like for our careers, right? You get Emmy. Like I get the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. And you have to know your audience and you have to know who you're soliciting to, right? Or who you're, you know, whatever that may, might be. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're photographing MMA fighters or athletes or boxers, yeah. you know, pick a boxing magazine. P educate yourself in that platform. Does ESPN have a magazine? Yeah, I mean, I'll, again, it's, it's one, about right? that thin. Oh, really? You know, yeah. You can get it in the stores, though? You could still get it in oh, the really? store. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. I'm out here. So, I mean, I get the Hollywood Reporter, and I want to know what, what's the style, what direction are these images going, you know? Yeah, yeah. What's, I see. You know, what's in fashion? What are the trends, now? kind exactly, of. Exactly, what's yeah, in trend? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... For instance, like the new generation is even teaching me on how to photograph yeah. and, and how to kind of be flexible with my style because I, I studied like with, within the confines of, of classic portraiture, you know, where all the parameters, rules, regulations, the do's, the don'ts, exposure, body language, where to place hands, what not to do, you know, if you're photographing a woman, how you sit them, how you pose them. Yeah. So I learned all this, you know, for so many years. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't work for this generation. So if I'm photographing, you know, like... Why not? Well, it's very voyeuristic. Mm, you know, okay. like the style of portraiture, the style of, of commercial portraits now for, for either publicists, for editorial, for magazines, for whatever it may be, it's almost like, you know, look at me, but don't look at me, right? It's, Absolutely, So yeah. when I say voyeuristic, it's like you're looking off camera, you're doing something very kind of extreme, looking to a corner. Make it look like we just caught you, even though we didn't. Just exactly. Yeah. So it's almost a stage, yeah. you know, natural shot. Mm -hmm. 
So if you could kind of balance within that place yeah. where it's, it's, I bring my style of, 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 of the classic portraiture, but I let the, nat the, the kids show their natural body language and yeah. their natural vibe. Mm -hmm. So they're like extreme with their posing and they're like very fashionable and they like the extreme angles from coming from a low angle, mm -hmm. you know, changing the perspective, doing all that stuff that's, you know, very appealing and very edgy. Mm -hmm. So when I say they've taught me, they've taught me to change my perspective, you know, mm -hmm. to change my angles of view, okay. to make it more extreme. And then I use lighting to make it more impactful and more graphic with my lighting. Okay. Because I teach lighting, like you're saying. Yeah. I t I've been teaching lighting internationally for, for, you know, 18 years. That's awesome. So I use that lighting to be part of the graphic image. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, I get so it. So hard shadows, you know, shadows under the neckline, shadows under the nose becomes an al another element that I could really mm. show in, in my, my portrait work. When you're, um, just something for my own, like, education, mm -hmm. like, um, for you know still photography when you're like just kind of running gun and shooting outside right what are, what are like the basics of what you need like do i like we have like bounce and do you bring like other little lights and things like that like what, Gosh, what are you doing the running gun and it, i mean it's different let's say if you're shooting video let's say if i was going to you know do something with video mm -hmm. you know we're too light with video you kind of it, there's always a key right there's sure. always like the sun yeah exactly you know so that's your main source mm -hmm. of light so what do you want to do with that key sometimes you backlight an image yeah and it becomes uh cinematic in a sense of like it's telling a story and just because it's you know you might not front light that image mm -hmm. just the backlighting creates yeah. the, the the emotion and a cinematic feel to that video mm -hmm. So, you know, you might bring boards in. That's where you see these photographers or these videographers bringing like these, you know, cutters or they yeah. bring, you know, scrims. They, they diffuse light, they cut light, they bounce light. So it's always at the end of the day, what's the... But is that what you're doing? Are you, are you doing that as well? I do that same thing for yeah. all my, like my out, outdoor work. If I have nothing, if it's, it's, a, it, it's a, you know... You and the camera? If, if it's you and the camera with no assistant, yeah. like I look for the sun mm -hmm. and I always have my talent either face the sun, yeah. always kind of face the sun because that's kind of what Gives I want to show. Yeah. yeah, but you know, what's the quality of light I want from that, from that sun? If it's something more diffused and a little bit, you know, lifestyle, then I put them inside branches, trees, something mm. that, that covers them, something that, that minimizes that sun. But if I want something graphic and very edgy or fashion i use that sun as a hard light as mm. part of the graphic element yep yep so that's good you know that's people don't like, utilize the sun i don't think enough it's so funny you, know? you see yeah. photographers the sun's there and they don't use it yeah you're absolutely right i created some of the like i did a photo shoot for reggie miller and the final shot looked like wow it looked like it was studio lit uh-huh <laughs> and it was reggie looking into the sun wow that's awesome. Natural God has a has a light there for you. Just yeah. use it, <laughs> use, use it, right? Yeah. And you know, sometimes we're scared on using it because it becomes like, well, you know, it's too harsh. Yeah, yeah. Or, that's you what, know. Yeah, that's what I would but, probably think. It's like, oh, maybe it's too harsh today. Like, maybe let's try to figure out another way. No. So what I do, you know, and if it, that sun is really coming up and over, and you know, you what would you want to do is prevent that raccoon eyes where it's like, yeah. you know, sockets mm -hmm. sunken in. But I, I might just stage the, the, the subject looking really looking high up. with their eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it creates just like, like an emotion. Mm -hmm. Like that portrait might be just an emotion because they're just like, you know, there contemplating maybe a thought. Yeah, I like the, it. In the bright like sun. That. So, I like that you know, a lot. It, depends, it depends what you have, your parameters. Okay. Do your kids, are they interested in photography? Do, do, do you teach them or do they have any interest in you that? You know, it's so funny because my... You have two kids, right? I got two kids, yeah. 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 And they're, they're both artists. Uh, one of them got, the, the younger one got into photography for a hot second. Okay. And, you know, I, I have a Hasselblad, like, you know, old digital camera and it shoots film as well. Yeah. So he shot film for about a year. Okay. Then he took two photography courses. He loved it for a hot second. <laughs> Because now he's going more into uh, designing, like fashion. Oh, really? He wants oh. to start a line. He's Very working, cool. you know. So, but it's still in the arts. My daughter, for instance, they grew up around the studio because mm -hmm. I was a single dad. So they were my subjects, you know. Yeah. They were they were bouncing light. They I probably have, have a lot of good pictures. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I bet you have a they got a whole portfolio yeah. for them. And but the funny thing is that intuitively they know about lighting without even knowing what, what the terminology mm. is. 
because they just still, growing up in that exactly yeah so they know that you know the the, the their eyes are too dark, you know, can you lift? Can we put something underneath to brine the face? Mm. So they started seeing this, you know, naturally happen. That's good. You Especially know, with like, uh, you know, you know, promoting and your brand and your social media, like that, having that. Is oh yeah, an yeah. Edge. As a matter of fact, yeah. So she went in, now she's in, she goes to UCLA in the performing arts uh, okay. major. So, you know, they're studying gels and filters and stage lighting yeah. and, you know, key lighting and all that. So that's natural to her so when she's she got that all from you yeah exactly just so many years of <laughs> do they doing thank it. you for like <laughs> they do well they come back and they say well i we didn't know until we took a course how much yeah. we did really know that's great so you know i mean it's good just the more you're around it the more you learn absolutely yeah i guess my next question would be you know what um where do you kind of see yourself going like what's you've done a lot you've done a lot and i know you're excited about the new hollywood yeah. but where do you want to like, do you have certain challenges or certain goals you want to reach over like the next year, five years? Like, what what do you look? What are we looking at here, Hernan? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I never really set that mark. Like, that's a good question because, for me, I I, I set a mark. Like, if your you're, if your aspirations are here, and your goals are here, then mm -hmm. that's where the level mm -hmm. you get to, right? And that you're striving towards. You're not striving just that you're towards to it, but exactly. That's, that's what you're. Yeah. So. I never set, I set the marker high. Okay. Because like, if I don't reach that high level, at least I reach maybe a little lower, which yeah. is still, <laughs> you know, still at a good place, it. right? Yeah. So what is that marker then? So, what is that high marker? You know, I've always wanted to, uh, I mean, you know, when I started this whole career, I said, I want to be just like, how can I put this? I want to be in these people's lives, right? That mm -hmm. I see in Hollywood, right? I want to get a glimpse of their lives, okay. like, you know, like whether they're champions, musicians, singers, Oscar, you know, winners or whatever it is. Kind of the best in the world. I, I want to, exactly. Life. Yeah. I want to meet the icons yeah. of, of, of the planet, like what the people, what they do, the, the best they do in their arena. Mm -hmm. I want to share a moment with them, right? Yeah. So I think I'm still aspiring to do that. Okay. You know, and... You know, some of them got away in the process for whatever logistics, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still set myself to say, you know, I, I, I still want to meet those people, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, Do you have, is there anyone specific that like is on the top of your head right now? No, I'll tell you the like, ones. That, I really want to see that person. The ones that got away, just on a, a, a you know, a backstory, like, oh, they, 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 they might have haunted me because yeah. like Sophia Loren was one of them. Oh, yeah. You know, I got a call from her agent. I was supposed to be in New York to teach, you know, okay. uh, at a photography uh, convention. And the agent knew, they're like, Hernan, you know, Sophia Loren will be here on, on Saturday, right? Like, she's asking if you could do her publicity shots. She's here for only a day. She's moving, going back to Italy. Well, I was supposed to be there the day after. Okay. So it, it, it didn't work out, you know? Mm. I had to change my flight. I had to change my hotel accommodations. Jeez. I had to change so much and, you know, and I thought about it, like, this is on my dime. Yeah. And what happens if I get there, I, it just doesn't work out. Yeah. So that quite didn't happen, you know? Okay. So, but it was nice that she gave me a call to yeah. photograph her, you know? Mm -hmm. Another one was uh, Enrique Iglesias, I was going to photograph, okay. you know, he was on tour, he was in Vegas. I was going to do something with his, his uh, publicist. I had another commitment, I'm sorry, I had another commitment with, you know, a job I had. I couldn't let them down, right? Everything was set out for that job. Uh, Nelson Mandela was mm -hmm. one that I just... But that was, yeah. I so much wanted yeah. to because I had the approval. Yeah. Everything was set up. It was just that like... That was less in your hands than it you was. You know, it was. You know, it was not in... Outside of your control. Exactly. But, you know, I, I still want to photograph, you know, like I, I still want to share a moment with all these people. And it, it's, yeah, becoming, it's becoming very complicated because there's so many people involved in the process. Yeah. Before it was almost like a gentleman's agreement. Like, hey, listen, you know, I love your work. Can you do this for my client? Sure. Now it's, you know, like sign these contracts. These are these release forms. Go through the creative director. You know, the go creative the director. Exec, go through the director. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're yeah. running through hoops. You yeah. know, you're running through hoops. Even to get the Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson shot, you know, it was two, two months of logistics. Jeez. You know, his gosh, manager, man. we need approval, the process of the publicist. You know, the... What would you say then? It, would you have any suggestions for, like, making that not an issue? Is there is there a way for that this world can kind of go back to 
You know that gentleman's agreement? I'll tell you what. I mean, I've always worked, which is not a safe place, and not many, many people take the leap of faith to go in with a gentleman's agreement. Yeah. Because it becomes about me telling you, like, can we agree either through an email saying, you know, I want, I want you to create images for me, for my publicity, mm -hmm. for my brand. And in exchange, you could use it to advertise your work, you know, your, your photography yeah. business or whatever. Uh, but what happens is, you know, these images get released or it goes through a platform, a social media platform. And somebody grabs the images. Mm. Somebody uses it without any, you know, yeah. approval License. from, from licensing from the person. It goes to commercial use. And that's where kind of that gray area goes. Yeah. But, that's you know, true. I think from the beginning, I think for me, and I've, wor I've relied on that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when I go with a contract and say, you know, the celebrity, so-and-so, mm -hmm. I need for you to sign this that, you know, I have full approval or full rights to your per person. Yeah. You know, the celebrity will say, they what the? They get, like, the? scared by they that, They get yeah. scared. They're like, yeah. you know what? Sorry, but we, we can't do that. Yeah. We can't give you any full licensing. Yeah. So it works where I create the body of work in the body of, you know, our interaction through emails, mm -hmm. we give each other approval. Okay. Like I'm creating this work, let's sign off that, you know, you could use this to publicize for ed editorial. If anytime these images are released for commercial purposes, wh whether it's a vitamin company, mm -hmm. they come back to me. Yeah. And it always works. Okay. I've never, I've been doing this for a long time and I've never had knock on wood, Yeah. not one time, you know, there's an image that comes off because, you know, you're using it without our approval or, okay. uh, by, or, vice, or vice versa. versa yeah. So again, it goes back to that, really that trust factor. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a gray area, man. And I can't, <laughs> I can't advise one or, or the other yeah. because I get colleagues of mine who say, you know what, I don't go anywhere, I don't pick up a camera unless there's a contract. Absolutely, I mean, I, I, I see both sides. You know I, what I mean? I've done both sides. I've done both sides myself too, yeah, so and, I, I get it. And I've been both sides yeah. because- I think it depends on the person too. And like you said, if you can discern people, then you can kind of figure out, okay, is this somebody that I can have that kind of thing? Or is this something that, you know, is gonna waste my time if there isn't a contract and then we need it. Exactly. So that's, that's kind of how I play it these days. Exactly, so again, you have to be a good discerner yeah. of, of, of the situation yeah. or of people. Absolutely. You know, and I've had actually young publicists, you know, with these young celebrities who come up with this contract where you need to sign everything away, full rights, full release. I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't get this from Mike Tyson. Like, why are you telling me what I'm gonna yeah. do with my images? I don't sign off, you know, like, I'm sorry, but I, I, I got to appreciate my work more than that, you know? Yeah. So it goes off, it lo it's lopsided the other way. Yeah. So, you know, again, every, every situation is different. Yeah, so last question. Um, you know, you've had, and this can apply to your, like, your life or photography career, whatever, right. however you want to think of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you've gone through a lot. You've lived, uh, you know, a pretty exciting life. We, had, we didn't even touch on everything. Right. We'll have to have you back on the show to talk right. about, like, your bodybuilding career and all right, that. Right, right. Um, but what would you say, you know, to, if you were to go back, if you were to go back to Hernan just starting out, what, what advice would you give to your younger self? Well, it's very difficult because if I go back and advise myself, there was no internet, you know? <laughs> That's how far back I go. <laughs> I don't want to date myself, but it's yeah. a whole different place, right? If I go back and say, what value do I have now yeah. that I've learned that I could say, you mm -hmm. know what, cut through all that and let's get to this place mm -hmm. as quick as you can. Um, I, you know, gosh, that's such a difficult question because, you know, it's always hard work, mm -hmm. you know, and if, if I could say back, when, when I started out, I started out like everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I knew I wanted to do photography, but I did like, I did some wedding work, I did some sports, I just opened up to just shoot everything, cool, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think if I would have narrowed down mm -hmm. to just like, do one thing and do it to the, the best of your ability. I probably would have pursued even my celebrity work, but just hone in on that from the beginning, mm. you know? How do I do, how do I contact publicists? You know, how can I shoot for editorial? How can I shoot covers for magazines? Yeah. How can I get to the agents as quick as I can? You know, how can I get to these managers? Because there's a lot of red tape you gotta cut through. Mm -hmm. And I think I spent a lot of time just building up and spinning my wheels elsewhere, yeah. right? Where I could have spent years on just like implementing all that energy just mm -hmm. to 
pursue that. Because when I did and I finally got to that place I wanted to do and I set the marker and I just kind of like two years hashing it out, I just, I, I, I got there far. You know, mm. I got there quickly and I got there far. that laser focus. It laser focus, right? So, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think you should do everything. Yeah. You know, and a lot of, you know, like the younger generation, you know, who are out there and just, you know, like, I just want to shoot. Well, shoot one thing and shoot mm -hmm. to the best of your ability and learn that craft and learn the skill level to excel and yeah. to excel to the top, whether, you know, it's shooting sports or it's shooting people, you know, or, you know, portraits. So I think, you know, that's the best advice I could even give myself now. Uh, like, yeah. even, you know, I yeah, start. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to even, for, like, yeah. To, Do you know to, what I mean? Like dabble and like I'm da always dabbling in so many things. Exactly. So you know, I start kind of like okay, like I'm going off here, and I still got to pull back and concentrate on this. And I think you never stop developing. You know, I think yeah. once you get to a place of saying like I've I've gotten to that place already, I feel satisfied. You stop growing. Yep, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? So, as if as, not backsliding too. You backslide. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's so funny because when I look at some of the celebrity work that I've done and I look, I look back, it's like, you know, some of it is mediocre, even to the skill level that I'm at now. Yeah. You know, I've been doing it. But You're I, the greatest critic, huh? Do you know what I mean? I know where I've dropped yeah. the ball. Yeah. Like, I got lazy on this one. You know, I got lazy on this one. And most people say like, oh, my gosh, this is, this yeah. is brilliant, right? But what brings the brilliance is it because it's, a, you know, this Oscar winner that I photographed, mm -hmm. you know, that, that they bring like, oh, my gosh, like, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. portrait. But no, if you see everything else, kind of sucks. Like I, I missed the mark. You know, the lighting's yeah. kind of off, and you know, the the, the expression's not really authentic. Mm -hmm. I, so I could be the hardest critic on myself, right? Okay. So I think I would also, you know, one skill level that I learned later in my career is finding out all, kind of like, all the don'ts. You know, mm. like where you screwed up. You know, like like where my mistakes were, mm -hmm. you know, the ex whether it's exposure, underexposed images, things that were blown out, expressions, you know, composition. Like, oh my gosh, I look at an image and I look at all the, you know, 300 or 3,000 images that I shot. It's like, oh my gosh, like I screwed up. <laughs> but I need to learn what, yeah. for what reason, you know? Mm -hmm. Everything was underexposed, everything was soft, you know, or like these images that were brilliant expressions and these, this was the money shot. It was a little blurry. Mm, that's I hate that. Do you know what I mean? That's, so that's frustrating. Yeah, it's so frustrating. Yeah. So I go back, man. I go immediately learn why, and I make notes. Okay. Because I never want to get there again. Hmm. And I want. I, I don't want to screw up. So early in my career, when I started seeing that the images were a little soft, and it was either shooting in natural light, or shooting you know on low key stuff, or shooting interiors, like oh my gosh, like I didn't use a tripod. I was free handing everything, freestyling. My shutter speed was way too low where it should have, I should have been pushing that ISO up. Mm. Certain technical, you know, s things that I, I, I didn't really uh, focus on, right? Mm -hmm. So I learned all that. So now it's so intuitive. I get to a place, the location, like, oh gosh, I see this. I recognize this. Yeah. Like, I know my ISO's up. Before. I know my, I've been here before, <laughs> yeah. right? So, yeah. and what you want to always do is capture authenticity, but, you know, your technical skills have to, substantiate exactly you still have to be able to execute on that you level still too. have to execute right yep. so that's another thing i want to tell myself mm. you know it's good in my practice you know get these things up and hone in because it's always vision we have a vision of of like whatever it is it's it could be editorial work it could be like a short film mm -hmm. but you know like sometimes we cannot execute because we don't have the skill level mm -hmm. So creatively, you might see like, oh my gosh, you got this thing going on and you got this fade and you're pulling the focus and it blurs off into like this beautiful mist or whatever, all this lighting <laughs> yeah. coming in. Yeah. You know, and this is for a video that mm -hmm. I want to create, but I cannot execute that, yeah. you know, so learn that skill level mm -hmm. and it becomes expansive for your, your creative, you know, abilities, you know, for your vision. So that's what I would say. That's good advice. Right? That's a good one. Good. <laughs> well, um, what, is there anything that you want to... Um, thanks for being here again. Yeah, well, thank uh, you, man. <laughs> but is there anything you want to like promote right now? Or is there a way that we, people can follow you? Or shout outs you want to have? Gosh, I mean, like for one thing, I totally suck at social media. We were talking about <laughs> social media earlier. We'll put your social links in the description. Yeah, right? so 
there's really nothing. I mean, I just enjoy the time. I enjoy giving, you know, and I think. What about your website? Your website is. Yeah, my website. If people web want to learn more about you, where do they go right now? Do so, they go to the website? Yeah, so, you know, everything is on my website. It's uh, www.hernanphotography.com. And there you find all the links. I got my okay. Instagram. I got my Facebook. Gosh, I mean, it's sad because Facebook, is it even active as much nowadays, right? It's it, it, the older, more older generation, um, it, it is. It right? is. It's different though. It's it's because the algorithm's so bad. Yeah. You do, you're not seeing who you want to see. Like you know, um, you know. I I think I have like I don't know, but like about a thousand friends on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, friend, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of family and, and real friends, but you don't even see. Like I don't even see probably. Like, I see maybe like one percent or two percent of the, on my on my feed. So it's it's a, yeah. it's just a weird thing. You're not seeing who you want. Facebook's thing is putting all these other things in it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a so whole different, different thing, right? Yeah. I, I, Instagram, I think, is getting a little bit better again. Um, honestly, like, uh, you know, I think TikTok is more and more becoming something that's useful for people other than the Gen Z. Oh, the Gen Z. Uh, yeah. Other than Gen Z. Oh, wow. Like, I think it is more, I think it is getting, uh, I think there's still room for, um, it's growing. It's right. getting more, more and more saturated. Right. But there's a lot of room for, like, say, if, you know, you were to go in there and, do like, you know, kind of day in the life photography or whatever yeah. you're interested in and posting it, that you can still, you know, kind of, you know, make an impact there um, organically. Right, um, right, right. So, uh, but yeah, Facebook, eh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I get, I don't know, it's, it's a job, you know, and I think if you, if, if you want to be successful in anything, it's yeah. just what it is, you mm -hmm. know. You, c you, you could fight it, but it's always beneficial. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good to promote it, so my <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> In short, it's H Rodriguez photos. We'll put we'll put links in yeah, the description so, for you too. You know, you could find me there. See what I'm doing creatively. You know, sometimes I, I do ed educational stuff, and but I enjoy this. You know, it, it's I, I do it passionately, and anything you pursue life in, whether it's two nickels or five thousand dollars or fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you know, anything that your heart is, it's yeah. always going to pay dividends. You know, and I just love doing this. Well, so. thank you again for being on the show. Well, thank I, a you, great man. conversation, and um, I look forward to uh, whatever your next shoot is. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and hopefully we we join maybe we'll be together. And do something right. <laughs> we'll be together. Absolutely. Thanks for watching the Elevated Look Show. Make sure to subscribe to get the latest episodes delivered directly to you.